Welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. And today I start this episode with this fine piece of equipment that uh, my wife gave me to my birthday. But uh, yeah, it's just amazing stuff. Unfortunately, it's too techy and it's too hard for me to figure it out because it requires time, but I'm getting there. So first things first, I tried to kind of download and put some... Oh, what are those called? Like drivers? And then I was like, fuck, I started to use Mac OS only for the sole reason of not experiencing or ever experiencing the need to install any fucking drivers especially when it's related with the sound and then i'm like okay something's very strange here happening but yeah it, it's connected i got it figured out and then supposedly uh, now the quality of sound should be better but yeah so shit i've made a note for myself to reveal a secret but then i don't know like what the fuck is this secret supposed to be like so anyway Probably I'll get to it at some point in time, but not necessarily. Today I am going to talk to you about remote work. Nice. So yeah, I'm <laughs> polishing on my uh, special effect modes and things like this. Ideally, yeah, I'd need the Gato Stream Deck to you to kind of program buttons and just click on them and do, do the more funny things like transitions and everything. But yeah. Today, remote work. So remote work. Oh, yeah, fine. I remember what type of secret I was supposed to reveal. Right, I'm going to make a note here. And uh, towards the end, I'm just going to look there and reveal that secret to you. But yeah, starting with remote work. So in my previous episodes, I told you about my story and how I work remotely as of February 2022, pretty much like exclusively remotely, 100% remotely, and being a managing partner uh, director at uh, Fanatic and being the co-founder of uh, Brand Expand and being involved in other businesses that I'm going <laughs> to dive into at some point in time later on. So, yeah, I've been uh, hiring people. I've been firing people. I've been uh, made changes in the processes and the way we do business in terms of like our product how, how do we create it and uh how, what are the processes underneath what is the engagement level procedures and things like this so i mean it's probably more of a operational management here we're talking but yeah not only this so they've got again probably five percent more knowledge than 95% of the population of uh, our planet. Although, a um, majority of the population of our planet have, a, yeah, fuck. Anyway, experienced uh, what it's like to work remotely at some point in time in their life. And especially during the period of COVID, right? So isolation and provision on going outside and things like this uh, so people had to adjust and of course some professions especially medical workers were the ones that called basically to the front line to help save humanity and in many cases they're underappreciated and typically they get to see the bad moments uh, not all well happy moments as well but still they're there and yeah in terms of them being treated, let's put it this way. Right, so again, remote work as a concept is not new in general. However, it got like popularized basically or widely known during the COVID uh, pandemic in 2020 mainly. Because in 2021, things started to change, well, depending on the location, but still. So the restrictions were eased up some water with uh, squashed grapefruit it's really nice refreshing and uh, helps to fill this um two liter a day uh, mandatory water drinking uh, habit so yeah 
talking about habits, by the way, so great book, Atomic Habits. I'm not sure if it's here or if left in Moscow, but yeah, make sure to read it. It helps you understand how habits are being formed and what are the micro steps that are there that you can basically change the pattern of a habit. So yeah, that aside, go back to the remote work approach. And yeah, so people know what it is, what it's like to work remotely. So it's not new, but in the majority of cases, remote work finished over the course of the next uh, couple of years, actually, in the majority of cases. Although people would say that the um, world is never going to be the same again. And there are reasons to it because, yeah, I mean, if it's not fully remote or vice versa, it is hybrid. So hybrid is still there. It is a, a way to basically make compromise with workers, majority of them, between the business and uh, employees. Because again, in in some strange cases over the course of 2022, 2021, there, there's been companies that tried to either steer the balance towards more remote approach. And there were those that were trying to do the, the opposite. So I don't know why, but my, my mouth is like extremely dry today. Maybe it's because of the humidity, because, yeah, I mean, 70% humidity is a minimum for me. I, I like, I thrive. Otherwise, I'm just suffering. Like now, probably the level of humidity. Let me just check. And I don't know why the fuck you need this information. But nah, yeah, well, 67%, so <laughs> close. So going back to that uh, thing about the remote work and the companies that are trying to bring uh, workers to the offices because they think that they're more productive there, even though there's evidence saying hardly against that approach. Actually, people who work remotely, their effectiveness is higher in the majority of cases. I don't have exact numbers, but I can find if you, you know, put in the comments, I'll just find this information because I've been involved in this remote work community um, of people, experts of some, you know, people at different positions within companies. So for instance, there is this company called Todoist and they have uh, their own like remote work director or damn, I forgot like what his position sounds like exactly. But yeah, he's in charge of promoting remote work in general and making sure that their entire processes are working together. So, dude, if ever there's a chance to catch up and speak on that topic of remote work, I'd be happy to. Um, so, yeah, just personal message there. Anyway, going back to the topic, so there are people who are actively working for the opportunity to work remotely and there are uh, like podcasts dedicated to remote work so i want to say keith barrington but i'm not sure anyway um let me let me find it because if i'm not doing it right now i'm not gonna do it ever probably um so yeah you can listen to his podcast and this is like amazing stuff for those the podcast is called about abroad and um yeah, so there's a, a series of episodes where the host basically speaks with people who live in who are either specialists in remote work or that what is called um, digital nomads field or area. It is there is a term in, that exists digital nomads. So typically, those were until COVID people with IT background, like kind of privileged to work from any part of the world because they have, once you have connection, you can see it anywhere on a beach and work and code. But actually, it sounds dreamy in reality. It doesn't work like this. It's just hard. I mean, they tried working on a sunbed with laptop. It is fucking complicated. I, I mean, not that easy as they portray it. 
especially with everything like water, sun, and everything that's happening. I, I don't know. I prefer like a room where I can sit and concentrate, ideally with AC on, because in, if it's like 30 outside, it's still hard to concentrate unless you're sitting at a cafe or near an ocean. But yeah, in those cases, it could help because of the breeze and fresh air. So those are the experiences that people value remote work for. And we at Fanatica Remote First Agency, uh, company, business, because this is like the core pillar, well, well, one of, it's not like in terms of values, in terms of the processes. So this is critical for us because, yeah, I mean, one of the key stakeholders is working remotely. So what do you expect, right? But anyway, I've gathered the knowledge, nevertheless, and um, understood that it is not that, you know, black and white, or mm, as they say, but yeah, um, so it, it's not like you remote, you work remotely and that's it. I mean, <laughs> it's not as easy as this, let's put it this way. Because there are like shitload of nuances. And one of the nuances is the need to be synchronous at all times. And what does synchronous mean? It means that this is like now in the moment communication with the other person like via video call for instance or in person so this is called synchronous right so you're synced in the moment and well it, it could be a text message exchange as well but it's just that not that speedy let's put it this way but async is critical and the concept of async and understanding of the entire like idea of remote work is critical because one doesn't go without the other and what exactly i'm saying here is that people typically suffer from a lot of meetings and there are meetings calculators out there you can find it and google it and just input the people who are participating at the meeting uh input like their average salary or understanding of how much they um uh, make per i don't know whatever the period is there mentioned like month or something and then the formula calculates like how much it costs to run a meeting and in some cases meetings could cost like shitload of money because if you bring like i don't know 10 100 200 5 000 people to a synchronous meeting what's the fucking point of it like how much it could cost in terms of time value of all the combined people who participate in such event so this is the, the general idea right so if you're working remotely you cannot be synchronous at, the, at all times because it, it just an entirely different approach you cannot just take your regular office work and then put it in the context of remote work and it's going to be the same no it's not going to be the same and some people need to accept it because yeah for some cases it could be that people lack this human connection and the the need to to connect and to make face-to-face um, -face interaction with the uh, people that you're communicating on a daily basis throughout their work related uh, time span and you know eight hours a day on average per five weeks uh, five days a week so yeah, that time that you spend with people and then it is just important to see in 3D version of those personalities and understand that they're not just faces or, you know, that part <laughs> here. So recently um, we went to India uh, to have this uh, meeting basically and spend time together for the vocation. This is another concept that is really interesting to explore because once you are in the remote work approach those are critical for you to connect so this was the time when we connect throughout that week and i've recorded my early episodes of that uh podcast then and there during uh our like 
connection, let's put it this way. And I had some thoughts in the moment. I remember it as, as if I said it just now. But this is the concept, right? So this is like workation. And this is another small box within this category of um, remote work. And there are other things like um, understanding of how and who should connect with, like, if you're a person that works within a business, you need to know who you need in terms of like specific people and specific like areas of expertise, knowledge, responsibility, or authority, decision making, or whatever the fuck you want to do with the long list, and then be able to know or flies here. <laughs> well, I mean, Lithuania and September, it's like this. So, yeah, um, and then figure out um how, how to reach them and if it is some instruction something that's written out there that uh, gives you an understanding that this is the person that you need to speak with or this is the protocol of you to decide and uh, make um, something out of it i'm just looking at the recording and i hope that it's not fucked up because i've been experiencing some issues today with my laptop and it's i don't know giving me sending me some strong strange signals as if my feed is lagging but uh, hopefully it's not totally fucked up and the voice is going to be there even if my uh you know facial expressions are not there at least you can listen so the thing about remote work is that oh damn should put it on like podcast section in apple uh, yeah right so I'll go back to that just run down right okay so um you need to understand like who you need to go with connect with or you know get information in order to progress with what the fuck you're doing at your the company that you work for or yourself and then if there's no, no clear indication of where to go to or uh, who's what and whatever what are you gonna do so your business is fucked in physical world you can come and find people on a certain floor whereas in the virtual world it's like entirely different so people can sit in different locations and yeah somebody could be in europe eastern europe somebody could be in western europe somebody could be an african continent throughout the multiple dozens of countries that are located there India, like Southeast Asia, Japan, US, uh, Canada, whatever, like Brazil, Argentina, and then those people could be spread out throughout the globe, right? So again, going back to the concept of the synchronicity, synchronicity, yeah, I guess. So it's not going to work like this because mm, you got to make a call on like eight calls within the day and then played according to the hours of work for hq it's just not gonna work it's just gonna kill the entire culture at your company and people would suffer and why the fuck would you want to do that if you're like decent human being seriously think about it but then yeah so you need to take this into account but again it is possible there there are companies that are like 100 percent remote so um I get to list them all because I don't know them by heart. It's not that I have a good memory. <laughs> but yeah, in that remote work society, there are a lot of people uh, from different companies that are like fully remote. Okay. And Todoist is just one of them on the, to top up the list. GitHub, not sure, maybe. And there are some others. Yeah, anyway, I'm not going to do it. So fuck it. And then you need to understand how, how it's working, okay, right? So the concept of synchronicity, synchronicity, you need to mm, rebuild it. So it is critical to think of how work can be done if people cannot communicate with each other at, in real time during meetings or whatever in, the, in engagement. Like, what is that person would be doing? I mean, if they cannot get a decision on something, is there a process that would guide that person to either, you know, get that decision by him or herself or, you know, escalate it or make something about it so that, again, the, the structure must be there. Because, again, you don't want people to sit there and wait for a fucking call to happen in a two weeks time. It's just... 
I mean, there are ways to communicate that would make that type of engagement like 100% more effective. But for this to happen, there must be like new procedures implemented, all right? So what the fuck does that mean? New procedures in terms of how you structure the process of work. So the concept of async communication and asynchronous like engagement in general or work, it is something that is critical for understanding if you want to understand remote work. Again, the reasons given previously. So what the fuck is async communication? Basically, it's not here now. It is at some point in time. And effective written communication. And there are people who say written. So would you advise me to go with a fucking email? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just don't, don't fucking do it. Don't ping people on Slack or Telegram or whatever the methods that you use. You need to think in a slightly different manner. So the idea of async communication is that you expect response by a certain amount of time. So say now it's midday, I expect response by 6 p.m. Uh, of this day because I got a lot of th other things that I can do, but on this is critical for me to get information. So I don't want to just go for the person being and tell her, him that, you know, boss, can I do this or shall I do this? I need to get that information nevertheless, right? So there's a method that you can use either in terms of like comments, in terms of like work on the code or presentation. There are cloud versions of every doc possible that you can work on. I mean, for designers, is Figma. For the other people, it could be tools like Trello, Monday. I, from the top of my mind, there are some other that Jira and Atlassian. No, I think it's some other entity. But yeah, anyway, um, so there are many of those, right? So project management tools. And you can use them to build the async approach because, again, everything's written there. The comments are there. There are maybe push notifications that arrive to somebody at a certain point in time. And once this, like, basically an overview concept, I hope it is easy to comprehend, though, because there are other layers to it and I can delve into them, but it would take a lot of time. So if you find this topic interesting, just put it in the notes um, and then, you know, spread the message, fucking donate. Damn, I'm gonna, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, right there. So put some crypt in there and then, yeah, talk to me, throw comments, share. And then going back to that thing. So um, this is like, critical aspect to nail and if you nail it you then don't need to be in the stress mode all the time because knowing that you are within your let's say work time frame you can be pinged by anybody typically right and people don't build boundaries of course because they don't want to Mm, I don't know, either like sound offensive or be perceived as if they're mean or whatever. But the idea here is that if company is working remotely, it means that people who work 100% remotely, they require a certain mental infrastructure in place. Meaning, if a person, say, live, resides in Japan, and the HQ is located in, say, yeah, Moscow, <laughs> of all the places. But yeah, well, just fucking for a good example, right? Uh, probably not going to happen, but still. So the time difference between them is like, what, nine hours? Or, I mean, I, I don't know. Let, let, me, let me just quickly Google that shit because... Time difference uh, between oh by the way there is a nice tool mm, yeah there's a there's a nice tool mm. <laughs> ice tool yeah I'm gonna find it for you you don't see my screen I'm fully aware of it 
the idea yeah so the website is called worldtimebuddy.com so what you can do there is uh input like certain and there's this free version on the website which is limited to a certain amount of time zones 10 or something like that so oh no actually the diff time difference between moscow and tokyo is only six hours so yeah that it helps you to calculate how it looks like so probably i'm not sure if i've uh, built a proper scene here so yeah the, the the scene that i'm supposed to be using is slightly outdated but uh, let me try uh, and change that while i'm talking to you <laughs> so the thing about that um remote work concept is that again you need to provide this ability for people to control their life basically because async world means that you need to also think about how people use their time and you don't expect people to <laughs> recommended so and then uh, you need to understand that people who work remotely they have their own life so you don't expect a six hour difference shift for a person who lives in tokyo and report to hq in moscow you know so i don't know let, let's say in moscow it is 5 p.m and in tokyo it is uh, 11 p.m so i mean that would be like extremely stupid to expect a person to respond at 11 p.m so you can definitely make something make do something about it right so what you can do about it is you mm, that thing is there was fucking banners they just grabbed my attention and there is this other thing which I it's just there, it's taking my memory, and I have those fucking tabs and I, I just keep like them open and at some point in time I just understood that I need to close all those fucking tabs because they're really taking up my memory uh, capacity. So yeah, probably need to detox for a day and just do that shit and put it in, uh, in in structured manner somewhere so yeah going back to the remote workers so they have their own fucking life okay and there's this concept that is related to the remote work it is called non-linear work day non-linear work day what the fuck does that mean so it's not like nine to five or however much is uh, relevant for the specific locations where you're listening or watching this so then again to understand that this is how people live right so they don't live for work well they do yes sure i understand it but we're talking here about like of course percentage of the population who knows what percentage would that be in terms of like uh, totally remote work capacity especially taking into consideration that nowadays even you know building construction can be done with robots and ai is out there so yeah i mean who knows right what would be the exact percentage but probably there are some data out there and you can find it if you want to so yeah go back to that so non-linear work day which means that people need to have their own life and you as like a work provider or employer or you holder of the job contract or whatever you call it so you definitely need to make sure that this is there and people need to rely on this that you know they can go to a fucking vet to attend to their dog or a cat and they won't be fucked up by your message somewhere in between saying i need this report right now 
So this is the concept of remote work in a nutshell, because this is something that you cannot do in your office. Oh, of course, I mean, you can arrange for it, you can plan for it and, you know, make it happen. However, for remote work, it is like significantly way more easier. But that concept in general requires one critical aspect and that aspect is called trust so what is trust right and there are many definitions of that specific word and there are many connotations i like a phrase that a colleague of mine used and i'm not sure that i'm going to reproduce it in the original manner however it sounded along the way of trust is the ability to be vulnerable in the eyes of the other party. Yeah, something like that. I don't know why eyes, but in the, I, I mean, the uh, recently been thinking about the eyes and the concept of vision. It's like really important, of course, part of life, but yeah. I'm, underappreciated um so yeah uh, going back to that thing about the shit i've lost thought completely <laughs> that happens anyway um thinking about uh, non-linear work and then uh, eyes i don't know why eyes but yeah you trust okay so there finally trust um it is in terms of business and in terms of remote work is something that can either make help you make sure that you succeed or you'll totally fuck it up if you don't have trust within the organization in general as part of your culture and this is a hard concept to comprehend what the fuck does it mean, right? So inside the corporate culture, there are many things, there are values that are typically used by companies to kind of highlight their core concepts of their culture and comprehend it and put it in like concentrated uh, concepts in words. Trust is something that should be there by default, ideally. However, there are cases when there is no fucking trust and people who demand for their workers to be monitored or controlled is a sign that a company has no trust in employees because, you know, why the fuck would you need to do it otherwise, right? If there is no performance, if the KPIs are not met, if... I don't know, person is not delivering on promises if person is not delivering on the expectations and not changing in terms of provided feedback from like previous episodes. And, and then such person should not be with a company. So it doesn't mean that you cannot know about you know those aspects of course you can through check-ins through uh, meeting certain period criteria, like monthly weekly that depends or like yearly or depending on like specific positions of course in the horizon of the estimation uh typically three months give you an idea of whether or not person is capable or not to fulfill what is expected in the majority of cases that happens earlier however this is like a common i don't know in my view i could be biased but anyway three months period probation probation period or however you call it so yeah going back to the trust so trust is essential critical like seriously you you cannot fuck up trust it once you do it that's it i mean Trust takes time to be built, but can be ruined like this. Trust comes on whores. Yeah, that fucked it up. Trust comes on food, leaves on whores. There are other phrases that I don't remember at that point in time about trust. Yeah, it's like a balloon. 
ball, you know, you fill it with air and then you can easily make it pop. So yeah, something like that. How do you build trust is another like entirely different topic and I'm not going to talk about it, but what I wanted to highlight today that there are like this theoretical foundation. So when people have a tendency to decide whether or not something is good or bad, they don't rely on facts. They rely on their own perceptions. I prefer to rely on facts. So I've been gathering data and the data confirms that remote work can be and should be more effective than full in-house, um, I don't know, nine to five, five days a week work, office work or something like that. Some, in some cases, hybrid could be more effective, but yeah, again, uh, physical connection in terms of like human contact, like eye contact, just see each other in physical world. It is critical to understand that it's just not only this image, there is a human being especially in the age of AI, right? I mean, you don't know I mean, whether there is a mask or AI out there. So going back to that reveal, the secret reveal, or reveal of the secret announced at the beginning of this episode, right here, right now, AI. Yeah, um, <laughs> stupid joke, but still. Um, so I went to AI and been exercising uh, in the last few days and using a lot of prompts to come up with some, you know, ideas and research. And I found it hard to work with the research papers because I, either my prompts are a piece of shit or I just don't understand how the algorithms work. So I definitely would love to hear on how to research using different plugins for ChatGPT for the version for the topics of menstrual health and especially related with education specifically in India but not necessarily it could be worldwide cases for um, children's targeted education like adolescent in terms of understanding how physiology works what are the boundaries what is consent and yeah i mean i've found a couple of interesting pieces coming from uh if i remember correctly pakistan or something like that so yeah there's been like really interesting studies done in terms of sexual education for adolescents and it's amazing i mean it, it's really important job that they're doing so yeah if anybody knows how to research that topic please uh you know drop me a message put it in the comments or reach out directly um to my twitter handle the other ross <laughs> yeah that's a funny story but probably for another time so the secret revealed is ai and the reason i put it this way is that i went to ai i asked to you know feed probably mentioned this before but anyway gather data about myself and then tell me like what should be the next 10 episodes be in terms of the topic to bring me the audience and bring me wealth and the ability to work from any fucking part of the world this is because this is what i want to do actually in my real life but yeah um i mean i love lithuania it's an amazing place amazing country in terms of like common peace and yeah nothing's happening weather in summertime is pretty good but in winter time you just want to cut yourself open because there is no sun and there's like this gray gloomy dark sky and you're like what the fuck and yeah throughout the december it was just no sun day and as you can see sun is there it's just amazing and the, the most uh, green city in europe probably yeah, so great place, but yeah, definitely there are other places we should like to explore. So AI told me that I should speak about remote work, so we'll see how it goes. I think this is the third one in a row because, yeah, before that brand strategy negotiation, so this is three out of ten. We'll see uh, what happens by the end of ten. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And yeah, spread the information, share, subscribe, and yeah, like it, comment, stay in touch. Be whoever you want to be.